indicated that Christ came into the world Amen. to save sinners. My friend, the Lord Jesus Christ was born into this world, the Bible says, to save sinners. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Have you ever read the Bible? The Bible is inspired, breathed out by God. Please, my dear friends, search the scriptures, Jesus said, for in them you think you have eternal life. Have you ever read the Bible from cover to cover? Please, my dear friends, search the scriptures. Look to the rock from which you've been hewn. Oh, God gives you your life and your breath, the ability, the power to get wealth. In Him, you live and move and have your being. The Bible says, fear God and give Him glory. This is the whole duty of man, to fear God and keep His commandments. But you've broken His commandments, my dear friend. You have violated His covenant. You have broken faith. You have sinned against God. For the Word of God declares all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now you may say, I've never committed adultery with my neighbor's wife. But Jesus declares, if you look at a woman with lustful intent, you have committed adultery with her in your heart already. My friends, God's Word, it condemns us you need Christ. This is why Jesus was born, to take the bullet of God's wrath, to take it on his own body. Sir, are you a Christian, sir? I am. Amen. Amen. Glad to hear that. Praise the, praise the Lord, my friends. The Bible says, let all that has breath praise the Lord. God gives you your American freedom. God gives you your wealth, the power to get wealth. God gives you your family. God gives you everything you have. Give Him glory. And this is the work of God that you believe on Jesus whom He has sent. This is His work. My friends, the Bible says faith without works is dead. Our church membership, our baptism, our deeds cannot justify us. They cannot render us righteousness, render us righteous before God. The Bible declares in Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6, that all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. All of our good deeds, all of our charity, our morality, our good works are like filthy rags. They are unable to conceal the shame of our sin. You need a covering, my friends. The fig leaves do not conceal the shame of your sin. You must, my friends, receive the sacrifice of Christ. The Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 12, to as many as received him, to those who believe on his name, he gives the right to become the sons of God, who were born not of the will of the flesh or the will of man or of blood, but who were born of the will of God. You must be born again, Jesus declared, if you would see or enter the kingdom of God. Oh, marvel not that Jesus says, you must be born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. You must be born of the Spirit. Please, my dear friends, don't lose your soul. Jesus said, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If you become the richest man, if you become like Elon Musk, if you become a prosperous and wealthy entrepreneur, a wealthy tycoon, and you lose your soul, you've lost everything. Nothing matters, my friends, except Jesus. Nothing really matters. At the end of the day, when we die, naked we came into this world, and naked we leave this world. We, we brought nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out. The scripture declares, my friends, you need the righteousness of Christ. Don't lose your soul. Have you ever seen the bumper sticker? There's a bumper sticker, you know, it says, he who dies with the most toys wins. My friends, he who dies with the most toys still dies. You cannot bring your nice truck. You can't bring your iPhone. You can't bring your fancy house. You can't bring your land, your gold. Your Bitcoin, they can't bring your toys with you when you die. 
What does it profit a man, Jesus? Oh, he pleads. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What can a man give in exchange for his soul? Oh, Jesus says, come now. Let us reason together. Come now. Though your sins be red as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though your sins be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Isaiah 118. My friends, come now to Christ. Come unto me, Jesus declares. All oh, you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, Jesus says, for I am meek and lowly at heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. There was a great African theologian named Augustine who said, our souls are restless until they find their rest in thee. My friends, do you rest in the grace of Christ? One thing is necessary today. One thing is needful to sit at the feet of Christ and to hear his word. Oh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. The preaching of the cross is to those who perish foolishness, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The word of Christ, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the word became flesh and dwelled among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. My friends, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth come by Jesus Christ. Have you been saved by grace through faith? Or do you trust your baptism to wash away your sin? Do you trust your confirmation? Do you trust your catechesis? Do you trust your christening? Do you trust your church? Do you trust in your works to save? The Bible says in Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. This is how we are saved. Not by our deeds, not by our works, the Bible declares all of our righteousnesses, that is, all of our vain attempts to please God, all of our attempts to earn favor, doesn't work. It doesn't work, my friends, for by grace we are saved through faith, that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1.29, that no flesh will boast in his presence. No flesh, my dear friends. Trust in him. Let the cross of Christ be that which you glory in alone. Oh, my friends, I will boast in nothing save the cross of Jesus Christ, whereby I have been crucified to the world and the world to me. Have you, my friends, oh, have you sat at the nail-pierced feet of Christ and believed his word and trusted his word one thing is needful one thing is necessary our lord told mary and he told martha one thing is necessary to sit at the feet of christ and to hear his word listen and be saved romans 10 17 says again faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of christ and how can they hear without a preacher my friends, you need Christ today. You need to be born of the Spirit. You need to be washed from your filth. Maybe you've stained your brain with pornography. Maybe you've stained your brain. The Lord Christ, He has washed my soul. He's forgiven my sin. And He will likewise cleanse your soul. He'll make you a new man. He'll give you hope. He will restore the glory of God, the image of God in you. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. However, Jesus told Martha, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Do you believe this? Do you believe that if you believe, you will see the resurrection of the dead, the revival of the necrotic? That you will see, my friends, a renaissance. You will be reborn. 
You'll be a new man. You need to be washed in the blood of Christ. You need, my friends, to be regenerated, respawned. Look to Christ. This is why Jesus was born. Jesus was born so that you would be born again. Oh, Jesus was born to die. Oh, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, among whom I'm chief. And if Jesus can save me, he can save anybody. Please, please, dear friend, turn and run to Christ. Run to Christ. Flee the wrath to come. Flee youthful lusts. Run to Christ and live. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. You say, I believe in one God. You do well. Even the devils believe and tremble. Faith without works is dead. Your traditions, your liturgy, your church, your religion cannot save. It has no power to wash away sin. Only the blood of Christ, only the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ has the power to forgive sin. Look to Him, all the ends of the earth, and be saved, the scripture says. Look to Him, as my dear brother mentioned, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up. And whoever looks on Him, whoever believes on Him, would be saved. Look and live. Look and live. My brother, live. Look to Jesus now and live. Turn your eyes away from the lust of your flesh, the lust of your eyes, and the pride of your life. Look to Christ and live. Please don't lose your soul. Jesus said, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? My friends, you could become the wealthiest tycoon. You could be the richest man. You can be the most powerful businessman, but if you die without Christ, you've lost everything. Don't be a loser, man. Don't be a loser. Don't lose your soul. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world, loses his soul? What can a man give in exchange for his soul? You might know the exchange rate of the dollar to the peso, the dollar to Bitcoin, the dollar to the yen, but do you know the exchange rate of your soul to this world? Jesus says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? That's a rhetorical question, my friends. There's no profit in it. The exchange rate is truly your soul. Your soul is worth more than this world. But yet, will you sell your soul to the devil? Will you sell your soul to Satan so cheaply? Will you throw your soul away so carelessly? Please, my dear friends, turn, turn, or burn. You don't want to burn in hell. You don't want to drop into hell. There's no drinking parties. There's no orgies in hell. Your friends are not going to be comforting you and partying with you in hell. It's not a joke. It's a real place. It's a real doom. My friends, our doom is to go from the womb to the tomb, from the fetal position to the fatal position. You're going to stand before God one day, right? It's just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. When will you die? How will you die? You don't know. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the time. You don't know when God will require your soul of you. My friends, your life is a gift from God, but one day God will demand an account. God will demand a reckoning for your life. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And the dead were judged according to their works, according to what was written in the books. And whoever's name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And hell and death were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. My friends, you don't have to be thrown 
into the burning trash pit that is hell. You don't have to be thrown into the city dump outside the walls of New Jerusalem. You can be washed clean by the blood of Jesus. That's why he came. Jesus was not born to give us a toy for Christmas. Jesus was born to die. Jesus was born to die for sinners. Oh, God demonstrates his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, for we who believe, for we who have appropriated his grace by faith. My friends, are you right with God today? Are you right with God? Do you thank God for your car? Do you thank God for your warm coffee on a cold morning? Do you praise God for your family? Or, or, are you alienated from your heavenly father? Are you estranged? Are you far distant from him? The Bible says you must be born again. Christ came into the world to reconcile us to the father. For unto us, the scripture declares, a son is given. Unto us, a child is born. And his name and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Oh, Christ came into the world to give us peace with God, not peace with this world. He came to bring a sword of truth. Do you know why Jesus was crucified? Jesus said in John 7, 7, the world hates me because I testify about it that its works are evil. Are your works evil today? What are you planning to do today? God sees, God knows. You can delete your browsing history, but God sees your sin. You cannot delete your sins out of God's sight. As the prophet Jeremiah declares, your sin is written with the pen of iron and the point of a diamond. The books will be opened, the scripture declares. The books will be opened and the dead will be judged according to their works. God has decreed a day of judgment, a day of reckoning. A day when you must stand before your maker. It's inevitable. It's inescapable. You are headed on a trajectory, my friends. Either you end up in hell or you end up in heaven. Either you end up in God's paradise, in his kingdom, in his glory, where there's no more tears, there's no more sorrow, there's no more pain, there's no more fears, and there's no more death. Or, or your soul will sink by the iron chains of your sinful habits, by the iron chains of your sinful addictions. Your soul will be dragged to hell by those demons laughing and mocking at you. And you'll, you'll burn, you'll burn. And the smoke of your torment will ascend up forever and ever. Please, my friends, I don't want you to lose your soul. What does it profit a man if he gets the nicest car, has the biggest house, the biggest farmland, the most gold, and he loses his soul? What can a man give in exchange for his soul? Don't lose your soul. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. You shall. That's right, sir. From WOC Maintenance, the Lord Jesus can wash away your sin. He can cleanse your soul. He has washed away my sin. The blood of Jesus cleansed my filth away. You might be in the gutter this morning, spiritually. You might be in the ditch. But the Lord, he can pass by you and say, live, live. While you're wallowing in your blood, he can speak life to you. My friends, God sees your sin. You can hide your sin from your mommy and daddy. You can hide your sin from your wife. You can hide your sin from the police. But God sees your sin. God knows. His eyes, the scripture says, are like a flame of fire. My friends, God's eyes probe into the darkness. The eyes of the Lord range to and fro upon the earth, beholding the evil and the good. Proverbs 28, 13 says, Whoever conceals, whoever hides his sin will not prosper, but whoever confesses and forsakes his sin 
shall find mercy. If we confess our sins, he is faithful, faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You can be washed clean. You can be purged. You can be sanctified, justified. It can be said of you, such were some of you. My friends, you may be a sodomite pervert. You may be a transgender pervert. But the Lord Jesus can wash you. He can save your soul. He is merciful to all who repent and call upon Him for forgiveness of their iniquity, forgiveness of their transgressions. Jesus was cut off. Jesus was killed to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make atonement for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness. Christ, my friends, He was born to die. He was born to die and be raised from the dead to forgive sinners. What's a sinner? A sinner is someone who looks at pornography, young man. A sinner is someone who loves money, loves self, loves pleasure rather than loves God. The giver of pleasure, the giver of money, the giver of yourself, the giver of your life. My friends, what is your heart set upon? The Bible says, do not set your heart upon riches, which truly make themselves wings and fly away. Jesus declared in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Don't be anxious about what you'll eat, what you'll drink, what clothes you'll put on. Don't be worried about, oh, i got to keep up with the Joneses. i got to one-up my neighbor. I've got to outdo my neighbor, my friends. All of this means nothing. There's always someone stronger than you. There's always someone wealthier than you. There's always someone smarter than you. It is vanity of vanity, says the preacher. Vanity, my friends, to live for the lust of your flesh, the lust of your eyes, and the pride of life. Don't lose your soul for a few more moments of sinful indulgence, of wicked gratification. Repent of that filth. Repent of that scum. And look to Christ. Look to the Lord Jesus who died and rose again to save sinners. The Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die and then the judgment. Death is inevitable, my dear friends. Death hunts you. Death is stalking you like an apex predator. Death will find its prey and sink its teeth in. When? You don't know when you're going to die, but you do know that you will die. It's just a matter of time. And your clock is ticking, my friends. Time is the fire in which we burn. Time is running out. Call to Christ and live. The Bible says God is rich and mercy to all who call upon Him. Turn to Christ who died and rose again for our justification. My friends, time is the fire in which we burn. Your time is running out. Your time is running down. Call on Christ today and live and live. There is no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. No other name. Not Muhammad, not the Hindu gods or devils. Only Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. Jesus is the only way, the only legitimate path to righteousness. You may think that you're on the best path, but looking out for number one is not pleasing to God. Look out for Him. He is number one, your Creator, my friends. He gives you life and breath. You could have been born blind. You could have been born in North Korea. Do you praise God for your liberties? Do you praise God for your luxuries? Or do you take for granted the American dream? People are fighting tooth and nail at our border. People are dying to get in this country and to have what we take for granted. Do you thank God? for your life, your liberty, and your pursuit of happiness? Do you thank God for the freedoms that you enjoy? Do you fear God? The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. 
and that in Jesus Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. All wisdom and knowledge is localized in Christ Jesus. It's all found in Him. Jesus Christ is an inexhaustible repository of wisdom and knowledge. My friends, turn from this foolish and vain way that you're on and look to Christ today. The love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money. Oh, money. Money answers all things. The scripture does say, but the love of money destroys all things. He who loves money will not be satisfied with money. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 10. But blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. My friends, do you want true contentedness? Do you want true contentment, true happiness? You need Christ. He is the bread that if you eat of, you'll never hunger again. He is the water of life, which you, in drinking, will never thirst again. Jesus said, whoever believes on me, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. This he spoke of his spirit, which those who believed that he would receive. Are you a receptacle of God's spirit? Are you a temple of his Holy Spirit? Or my friends, are you filled with the love of money? Is money on your mind? Is the first thing in the morning when you wake up the thought, how can I make more money today? How can I gratify my flesh today? How can I have fun today? What's for breakfast today? Or do you think, Praise God, I'm alive. Thank you, God, I'm not in hell. I'm not in hell where I deserve to be. What is your first thought? Do you thank God for your life, your liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that you enjoy, that many people are fighting at our border to enjoy? Or do you take for granted your life? Are you guilty of the sin of presumption? You don't know your life, my friends. You don't know when God will call your number. The Bible says, your life is like a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. Our life is ephemeral. Our life is transient. Death is inevitable, my friends. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. The heart of fools is in the house of feasting. Do you love to go from party to party? Do you love the party scene, my friends? Or do you love to pray? Do you love the Bible? How much time did you spend in the Word of God this morning? How much time did you spend in prayer? I ask you those questions. Do you have a relationship with God? Or are you alienated? Are you estranged from your Maker? The Lord Jesus Christ, He can give you the atonement. Jesus Christ was cut off to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin to make atonement for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness. This is why Christ was crucified and raised on the third day by the power of the Holy Spirit. He died so we might live. Jesus wept so that we might sing for joy. Jesus bled so that by his stripes you would be healed. Jesus died so we would live that we would be reborn, that we would be born of the Spirit, that we would be born again. My friends, there is hope for you yet. You don't have to die in your sin. You don't have to die as an enemy of God. The Bible says, if you do not believe that I am He, Jesus said, you shall die in your sins. However, there the Bible says, a living dog is better than a dead lion. A living dog. Are you living like a dog today? A dog only lives to gratify his carnal urges. A dog, a beast, lives only to sate his beastly inclinations, my friends. But yet, while you're living, while you are in the land of the living, there is hope for you. There's hope. The Bible says a living dog is better than a dead lion. My friends, call on Christ today while you have hope. While you have the opportunity, today is the day of salvation. Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you shall be saved. You have God's word. You have his promise. God, who cannot lie, promised eternal life before the ages began. Titus 1-2 says, God promises eternal life. 
You can take that to the bank. You cannot trust our president. You cannot trust Donald Trump. You cannot trust Joe Biden. But the Lord Jesus Christ, his word comes with full faith. His word is fully trustworthy. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. And what is his word? Repent. The first word that Jesus said in a sermon was repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. What does it mean to repent? Change your mind, man. Change your mind. Take your mind off money. Take your mind off women. Take your mind off wine, women, and song. Look to Christ. Mind Him. Mind your Maker. Look to Him. Set your affection on things above, where Christ dwells at the right hand of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Don't be worried about your life, what you'll eat, what you'll drink, what clothes you'll put on. You don't need anti-anxiety medication. You don't need antidepressants. You need Christ who died and rose from the dead to make us at peace with our Maker. You're going to face God one day in a few short moments. A day with the Lord is as a thousand years. A thousand years is as a day. You don't know when God will require your soul from you. You don't know when God will deploy his angelic sergeant at arms, that angelic bailiff, to collect your soul for judgment. My friends, God has highly exalted Jesus, given him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee would bow and every tongue would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Do you love the glory of God? Do you fear God and give Him glory? Do you repent from your sorceries, from your adulteries, from your lies? Do you repent, my friends? Do you throw your idols to the moles and the bats? Or do you love your idols, which make you idle and vain and fruitless? My friends, repent of those idols. Repent of those false gods of money, of the love of pleasure, the love of treasure. The love of self, that narcissistic spirit, that hedonistic spirit, that spirit of Jezebel, that spirit of the American dream. The American dream is not reality by definition. It's a dream. And it will prove to be a nightmare unless you turn from your love of money and love of pleasure, love of self. Turn from these things. Repent. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who laid down his life willingly. God loves a cheerful giver. Christ gladly sang in Gethsemane, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And in the Jewish calendar, the day begins with the evening. Christ quoted Psalm 118. He rejoiced as he gave his life. He cheerfully offered his life as a sacrifice for sin. Oh, do you fear God today? Do you love God? Or is there no fear of God before your eyes? My friends, look to the Lord and be saved. Be washed, be cleansed. Be, my friends, acquitted of your crimes against the heavenly court. My friends, if you don't have Jesus, you're an enemy of the state of God. You're an enemy of the state of heaven. Christ. Oh, he is generous. If any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Doesn't matter, my friends, what life you come from. Doesn't matter how low you've fallen. It doesn't matter how filthy your fantasies are. The Lord Jesus can cleanse you. He can wash you. He can make you a new man. He can give you hope. He can give you a new birth. You can be born again. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away and all things become new. You can be renewed by his power. Please, my friends, you could sit with Christ even now in the heavenly places. 
You can be a new creation. Please, my friends, turn from your wicked way. Turn, repent of your righteousness. Not only repent of your sin, repent of your righteousness, your self-righteousness, that is. Repent of trusting in yourself. The Bible says, whoever trusts in his own heart is a fool. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil by believing on Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. It will be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Jesus and he shall direct your path. My friends, do you see a man who's wise in his own eyes? There's more hope for a fool than for him. Are you too wise? Are you too much of a wise guy to call on Jesus for salvation? Are you too wise in your own eyes to see your need for Jesus? Please don't lose your soul, my dear friend. Christ was slain and raised on the third day to save sinners. He is merciful and magnanimous to all who call on him. Avail yourself of his kindness. Avail yourself of his mercy. If any man sin, we have an advocate. Jesus Christ is free legal counsel. He is free legal defense. And the prosecutor, the devil, oh, my friends, he will drag you to hell as it were the bible says if any man sin we have an advocate with the father don't be indicted don't be incriminated don't be damned for your pornography addiction for your love of money your love of pleasure and your love of self rather than love of god don't lose your soul don't die without christ Jesus said, if you do not believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Don't die without hope. Don't die without Jesus. Don't die without the hope of the gospel. That Christ was crucified and buried and raised on the third day according to the scriptures. My friends, please, the Bible says, let all that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We got noise pollution happening here. <laughs> we got noise pollution. But the Lord Jesus, he can clear the air. He can clear the sound waves. You need to repent, my friends, of seeking to drown out the word of God. As Stephen was being stoned to death, his murderers plugged their ears. They stopped their ears. Why? Because Stephen was preaching the Bible, preaching the truth. My friends, Jesus said, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Your constitution, your president, cannot give you freedom. Your president doesn't even know what state he's in half the time. Your government doesn't afford you liberty. My friends, liberty is in Christ alone. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3.17, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Do you enjoy your freedoms? Do you enjoy your luxuries as an American? Do you enjoy all of these fine things, these fancy toys? Give glory to God. Shut the fuck up, idiot. I can't hear you, sir. I can't hear you. Let's talk. Let's talk. My friends, hear and fear the Word of God. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. <laughs> hey, your horn seems to be uh, malfunctioning there, friend. Oh, you got to repent. Honk if you love peace and quiet, man. Honk if you love peace and quiet. My friends, you need to repent of your recalcitrance. Repent of your incorrigibility. Those are big words. And it's too early for big words. <laughs> repent, my friends of your distaste for the Word of God. I ask you today, is the Word of God an object of contempt to you? Is the Bible an object of scorn? Do you know why Jesus was killed? Jesus said, the world hates me because I testify about it that its works are evil. Jesus wasn't crucified for giving out free hugs. Jesus wasn't killed for going around telling people, I love you and have a wonderful plan for your life. 
Jesus is not a hippie. Jesus was crucified because he said, I testify about it, that its works are evil. For instance, sodomy, the transgender, LGBTQ plus an abomination. It's a wicked abomination, a perversion of God's natural order. And for speaking the truth, while pulling no punches, Christ was crucified. Wake up, my friends. Wake up from the American dream. And wake up from your false prophet preacher. Some of you, some of you have a false pastor that comforts you with lies and says Jesus came to give you prosperity. Jesus came to give you your best life now. You ever hear that book by that false teacher, Joel Osteen? Your best life now? <laughs> Do you know that 11 out of the 12 apostles were violently killed for their faith? Oh, my dear friends, Jesus came. He came to die for sinners, to give us the hope of eternal life, and to give us a cross to bear for him. What cross do you bear today? What cross do you bear in your pursuit of Christ? Please, my friends, consider your ways. Consider your ways, as the prophet Haggai says, consider your ways. You eat and are never satisfied. You earn wages only to put them in a bag with holes. My friends, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. The love of money, the Bible says, whoever loves money will not be satisfied with money. Ecclesiastes 5.10. But Jesus said, Matthew 5.6, I think, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. My friends, you can be eternally sated, eternally contented, if you hunger and thirst for the righteousness of Christ. The Bible says, for God made Christ to be sin for us. He made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. My friends, cease and desist from trusting in your own works. This is a cease and desist order. Don't trust your own works. Repent of your sin and repent of your righteousness. Repent of your attempt to flatter God into heaven. God is not impressed with my preaching. God is not impressed with your life outside of Christ. If you are extraneous to Christ, if you are alienated from God, God is not impressed with your church membership with your social club slash church membership. God is not impressed with your baptism. God is not impressed with your charity. My friends, you need Christ. He died and rose again. Praise the Lord.